Welcome to tonight's Speedway Crazy Show. And we got a new feature for you guys today. As you see, we will uh, use the chat so you can log in to uh, YouTube if you, Tommy, can open the chat for us. Get your favorite rider in a Speedway Canvas today. Buy them at speedwaycanvas.com. And here we are with uh, Shimon Vosniak. How are you, guy? Uh, I'm pretty alright. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening. So, how's your preparation for this season going with the coronavirus and everything? Oh, yeah, so for, for first, uh, I would like to say sorry for, for my English. It's uh, every, every year uh, a bit worse after winter because uh, I don't speak English uh, uh, often uh, compared to, to season time. And for, for second, just thank you for, for your invitation. That's a that's pleasure. Ah, you're, uh, <laughs> you're, you're welcome. And trust me, your English is very nice. Trust me. Uh, I, I will try to do my best. Uh, I hope you, you understand me well. So get back to your question. Uh, yeah, for sure it's it's not easy, but uh, uh, that that lasts for quite a long time, uh, isn't it? So uh, I think um, speedy riders are, are people who um, need to um, uh, know how to uh, fit with, with all changes and uh, New new reality. So um, I think uh, we just accept that and try to do our best to to prepare to to next season during uh, unfortunately coronavirus pandemic. Uh, and we we just want to prepare as as good as we can. How has the sponsor market been for you? Have it been like normal, or have you felt any changes in the sport sponsor market, negative or positive? Uh, it it hard to say that uh, pretty much uh, depends on uh, uh, what is your sponsor doing, yeah. Because uh, some um, some business is, is going pretty alright, some business is going similar, like like uh, no matter before, and uh, some some of businesses is going uh, a bit worse than than before. So uh, it depends. Uh, of course, I, I see some some kind of difference, but uh, uh, for luck, uh, more or less, uh, my budget is uh, is on the same level. So I'm um, pretty happy of that, and and uh, I so appreciate uh, that my sponsor are, are still with me, uh, no matter this uh, tough time. You're talking about budget. Uh, you don't need to tell us our, your specific numbers, but where's the budget? You know, for a rider which race in Pegge Extra Liga uh, and other teams, what's the budget around? Do you, do you have some number you can tell us so people know what we are talking about here? Uh, it, it will be it, you. You've been speedy rider, so so you yes. know that uh, that could be much lower uh, level, and uh, you can achieve uh, great results, and you yes. can spend uh, plenty more money, and uh, your score could be worse than, yeah, yeah, than yeah, before. Yeah. So uh, it it's hard to say, but uh, I think average budget of uh, PG Extra Liga rider like me is uh, something between. Uh, 500,000 and 700,000 Polish Lotte. Okay, so 
that's a lot of money. I will not even try to uh, make that numbers in my head because I'm not the best in mathematics. So. <laughs> me too. Me too. Trust me. <laughs> I like when other people do that. You know. <laughs> you know, I uh, one one thing is is um, is uh, I don't know how to say it kindly, but uh, a bit piss me off yeah but just uh, many people say like speed riders uh, in pgx rally earn earn a lot of money yeah because yeah. they just uh, don't know uh, this huge difference it's huge difference between uh, earn money and yeah. get money yeah? yeah we maybe maybe we get plenty of money but uh, it doesn't mean that we earn same level money yeah so uh, we we earn good money of course but we need to spend a lot of to to get that of course, you have diesel for your car, you know, transportation, you have uh, mechanics, you got probably two of them, you got some yeah. manager that probably want to have some money out of your pocket too for promoting you and plus, plus, plus equipment and so on. Um, engines tuners services uh, tires uh, we can uh, we can say a lot of uh, this uh, small things which uh, on the end makes a huge price for it yeah yeah and you need to take the long big leap to make the very big money just like Bartek Smarslik and other world champions you know it's did this this uh, leap becoming the world champion but i think as i see it from outside i don't know if it's correct but it's easier to get in the money when you are Polish world champion. Um, yeah, that's that's something in that, but that was uh, not huge difference. Uh, mm, you know, Polish um, Polish uh, PGX Strategia bosses uh, look they mainly look for for your league scores because that's uh, that's their. Uh, their job and yes. uh, they just need to to have a rider who's not a polish champion who they just need a rider who uh, brings a lot of money to to your club so yeah. uh, of course that's a bit connected but uh, that that's one one thing uh, which um, uh, gives you some advantage but uh, it's it's not all of course of course and how is your future? You you 28 now, around 28. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm 20 and this year. So, what about Speedway Grand Prix? We will see you in Grand Prix. We will see you in Speedway European Championship, for example. I really hope, uh, and I uh, still keep working hard to to achieve that. That's my big dream to one day become Speedway rider, uh, Speedway Grand Prix rider, and. Uh, um i hope that they would that they will come but uh, you you know that uh, it's it's pretty tough for for polish rider to uh, get to to gp because our polish qualifications are uh, so tough it's like uh, polish championship uh, round and you need to be in top 3 or top 4 to qualify to international uh, qualifications so yeah. For sure, it's it's not easy, but uh, of course that's that's possible. So uh, as long as I will race speedway, I will believe in that and keep working hard to to one day be there because I I'm sure that's possible. Are you ready to do something with the speedway European Championship this year? We have the qualification to this year, or is it will will it be seeding? I, I really don't know yet. Yeah, our, uh, our because of pandemic, uh, yeah. our our Polish rules changed a little bit because before uh, our Polish qualifications to speed the European Cup was uh, mm, eliminations, semi final, yeah. and and final of Golden Helmet. Mm -hmm. Now uh, to to mm, to don't have uh, so many meetings to to avoid the Corona uh, problem, uh, just. Uh, Riders from Polish national team are mm -hmm. are already in the uh, Golden Helmet final, and uh, top three or top four riders uh, will just qualify to next rounds. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. So, but you you haven't had any big injuries like many of the other riders. You you managed to stay injury free. <laughs> of course, like everyone, I try to do my best to to avoid the yeah. injuries, but. Uh, 
uh, as you know, that's not easy and not everything, sometimes not everything uh, is up to you. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I think it's like for, I don't know, like 20 or 21 years of, of uh, racing mini speedway and now speedway, it's, it's quite okay. Uh, I had some injuries, uh, of course, but uh, not not anyone was uh, pretty serious, I think. So uh, just uh, keep it on the same level. Because you, you, you touched on uh, Mini Speedway, you had a great career in Mini Speedway too. What was your achievements? Uh, I've been a Polish champion under 16 and I was uh, Forward in uh, European Championship, so uh, yeah, that's uh, that's my best achievements. And team Polish champion, I think. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, quite nice uh, story when I was a kid. But is it a lot of mini speedway in Poland right now? Because it seems like everything is about 500 cc extra liga, first liga in Poland. It, is it any like in Denmark is full of 85 cc and in Sweden they talk about this all the time but in Poland I never really heard about that so how's that yeah. community yeah true uh, when I was racing on uh, mini speedway uh, the most popular uh, category in mini speedway was like 85 cc mm -hmm. uh, same as as you say in in Denmark and or, or Sweden. Now in Poland that changed a little bit and there is a class uh, 50cc for, for small kids and yes. then the class is up to 125cc mm -hmm. and uh, most of riders in Poland use just uh, four-stroke engines 125cc because yeah. they are much much cheaper uh, of course, of course. and their life, lifetime is, is much longer so um, Parents uh, don't need to spend as much money as for for 80 cc uh, bikes, uh, which are uh, pretty fast but uh, expensive. Um, and uh, then there is a class uh, 250, and that's also something new. When I was racing on mini speedway, that was nothing like that. That was only under 16 uh, 80 80 cc, and then just 500. So yeah. now it's like uh, more more uh, more steps, more classes, and um, I think this um, mini speedway thing and and of and also pit bike schools are are, are growing pretty fast now, and uh, I think that's a pretty good uh, direction because uh, pretty young uh, kids can uh, ride on on for example pit bikes which are not not expensive and and lifetime is is pretty okay and parents don't need to spend a lot of money to uh, begin uh, and continue career of, of young young kid. Yeah, and this is what we talked about with uh, Mark Lemon and many other riders, Kenneth Caruso Hansen, uh, last week here on the show uh, about this uh, level of uh, uh, cost, you know, uh, yeah. especially with the two-stroke 85 cc engines, which just uh, it costs a fortune because it's a motocross engine and you need yes. to tune it for speedway, you know. And in a motocross, you don't uh, rev on the maximum all the time, yeah. but in speedway, you do. So if you yeah. take a normal <laughs> motocross engine doing that, you will blow it immediately. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. why I, I that's why I tune up my my ATCC engines uh, for myself uh, yeah. with my father. Uh, so, but that was nice story, and I uh, I learned a lot from from that time, and uh, uh, I think that was a nice time to to remember. I ask all my guests this: How did you start with Speedway? How did you get into the sport? Uh, it's uh, in, in uh, it's for me. It's pretty hard to to say. Uh, to be honest, uh, nobody knows that from from what I just uh, was uh, from early early years. I was uh, so interested on speedway. Uh, my parents never been on, on stadium before. They just like to hear the speedway in radio or watching uh, uh, TV when uh, some some meetings or GP was on TV. They just watch, but nothing else. And uh, when I was a uh, young kid, I just 
takes everything with what uh, brings uh, some speedway news or, or photos or uh, or speedway radio i just uh, follow everything and um, in the year 2000 yeah. uh, one guy just uh, get the idea to to build up the amateur mini speedway track in a city called uh, Tuhola, pretty close to like pretty close one hour from from Bitgosh. Yeah. that's my hometown yeah and uh, yeah a couple of friends just uh, just get the idea to build up amateur mini speedway track and her, their um, sons just start to to practicing on on this track and i just uh, came with with my father for first to to watch these practices to just uh, see speedway uh, live for for my first time and after a couple of uh, these visits on, on this track they just asked me if you would like to try uh, <laughs> take take the helmet take the bike yeah, and yeah, yeah. Uh, try and you didn't say no <laughs> <laughs> yeah and, yeah, for first my my father didn't say no. Yeah. I was uh, seven years old then, so yeah, yeah, uh, of course that, you uh, need to make a decision. Uh, my yeah, yeah, my word was uh, not not too big, and but yeah. I just uh, want to do that. My my father um, accepted that, and uh, yeah, I did a couple of laps, and uh, just one month later, my my father just. Um, it change uh, standard uh, road bike uh, for for pretty low mini speedway bike uh, um, so that that was not proper speedway bike that was something like uh, yeah no yeah, more yeah, road I know, bike but change, changed it, a lot and uh, i i tried to practicing on this bike yeah that that's the beginning of my story so it's like it's this is nearly the same story as we had here in Norway. There was a club up in Miosa in Norway, close to Hamar, where we had the Grand Prix, mm -hmm. you know. And there was a track built up there. Um, and and the people in that club didn't have so much money, you know, because everything in Norway is extremely expensive. So, mm -hmm. But they loved to be in the sport. So they took some small old mopeds. They made something, you know. Of course, the safety gear on the kids was like always important, yeah. must be number one, but the bikes, the bikes were safe, but it was different. And I remember when they were coming around from track to track in Norway and everybody thought it was so awesome that they didn't have the money, but they still made something and they came, you know, and they raced and they had fun. You know. That that's that's the most important thing. I I think on the beginning it's just up to have fun and just uh, spend your time, uh, take your time, take your heart, take yeah. uh, everything what what you have. Just uh, uh, just woke up in the morning and think about speedway and just yeah. lie down in your bed in the evening and think about speedway still. So uh, then things like that are, are possible. I believe. You have kids. Yeah, I have uh, two daughters, twins. So it will be two uh, girl speedway riders then? It's hard to say. They are uh, too young at the moment. They are, <laughs> uh, they are nearly three years old. So uh, we will see. But uh, just a couple of days ago, I took them for first time in a shop with um, small pit bags. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I don't know. We spent there like uh, an hour, and I couldn't took them out from the shop. Because, <laughs> they were like uh, amazed like this. Yeah, they were like 20, 20 bikes and and uh, five quads, and they just need to sit on every single one there uh, you go. <laughs> for 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 a couple of minutes. And uh, yeah, that was not easy to to took them out. Uh, and I I think I know what what they were gonna get for for third birthday. <laughs> I, my my grandfather he bought me this Yamaha PV uh, 50, 50. Uh, yeah. and I was three years old and okay. I have on Instagram a photo of that when I'm sitting on this for the first time and holding full speed <laughs> it, it was so amazing and so fun so um, your daughters is not too old and, but you got <laughs> twins so you know yeah. it's a double cost yeah, but maybe you got a nice sponsor that will help you guys. 
Yeah, I think uh, that's big chance to to get sponsor, but I'm not sure if I I just want to uh, let them be speed riders. Ah, you never know. You don't know. I we we had a girl in our team, and the girls okay. they are much tougher than the guys. Trust me, <laughs> because they they got something extra which we don't. Trust me, it, it, that's true. So uh, I. You know, yeah. my daughters, my daughters are tough enough at home, so yeah. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I I don't know if I need any better. <laughs> <laughs> what, if your career stopped right now, what would you do? Do you have any education or something to fall back on or do you have any plans? Uh, to be honest, I don't have, I don't have any plan. I, I finish. Uh, high school uh, with um, like uh, um, cars mechanic uh, uh, yeah cars cars mechanic school I finished that and uh, I really like uh, working in in the workshop yeah. uh, I have I have my other workshop at, at home and I have a uh, couple of cars couple of uh, motorbikes um, uh, many different ones and uh, I really like uh, spending time my free time uh, in there and I think if if I will uh, need to do something more I, I for sure that that will be connected with uh, um, uh, motorsport I think that's uh, that's something what uh, what is my uh, destination and uh, Mm, if I will have money, I, for sure I will become a, a rally car driver because I really like it. Uh, but yeah, that it's even more expensive than Speedway, and you can't earn anything from that. So uh, it depends. It depends. Uh, but if I will end my career for now, I'm 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 not rich uh, enough <laughs> no to, rich. to be a rally car rider. <laughs> no one of us is rich. Trust me. <laughs> Adam Mawich, he became a rally car driver, didn't he? The ski jumper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, he had the Red Bull sponsor. Yeah, and, so of course uh, he got a little bit just, help from the bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> and same with uh, Kubica, he went from Formula One to rally, and he had this insane injury in rally. Yeah. And then he get, went back to Formula One. Yeah, he did uh, one season in. Uh, uh, we can say not the fastest car. Uh, no, no, no. That, but that year. That... Williams was uh, yeah. not good one in in that season. But uh, I don't care about his scores. But I, I, uh, I, I'm really blessed that I I saw that he just get back to Formula One. Yeah. From uh, injury like that, after ten years or eleven years of or pretty hard uh, recovery, hard job, yeah. he just uh, get back to to forming one car and uh, show everyone that uh, impossible is nothing. It's everything in our heads. We see many pictures of Thomas Golob these days. He's standing with this uh, kind of machine. Is it? Yeah. So yeah, that's, do, you, that's do you have any news for us about Tomasz Golob? We that don't speak Polish, you know, we got many of of the people around the world that don't speak Polish and they, they don't know mm -hmm. how to translate things on social media. Can you tell us a little bit about what is going on, the latest news, which is public? Uh, yeah, the last days Tomasz says, uh, says in interviews that uh, he, he start to feel his legs a little bit. Wow. Uh, so he he says like he he feels kind of touch in 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 his legs. So that's a big step forward. And um, he I know he he worked pretty pretty hard to to get back to uh, to his form to to the healthy and. Um, he's still thinking about. Uh, he's waiting for for some uh, next steps with with his um, mm, uh, rehabilitation in uh, in USA. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know just uh, COVID. Uh, yes, I know the limits slow, there. Yeah. Slow, slow, yeah, slow down everything. Uh, but uh, I know he's in in pretty pretty good uh, physically condition now and and physic. Physic, uh, physically, so uh, we keep fingers crossed, all, all everyone for for him, 
and uh, we really hope that one day he we can we can see him on his uh, standing up with on, on his legs without any equipment yeah and he, he said in some medias uh, a while back here or a few years back that he would sit on the speedway bike again no no question about that so if Tomasz Golov says something, yeah, yeah. You, you can be sure that, that he in one day he, he will do that. Yeah, and at that time there was no feelings anywhere and nothing was, everything was like quite shitty situation right then and there at that time. And he was like determined in the head, he, he wanted to do that. He, that was his goal. I remember that day, I was in Grudjans and uh, and and doing something with Antonio Limbeck in Grudjans, mm. and then uh, Antonio Limbeck w- was on the same team as uh, Golob, mm-hmm. and and then we got this news from Bidgos that he had the accident on the motocross, you know. Yeah, and I think it was Ukash Benzin Canal Plus which came to me and told me, and it was first uh, guy I heard it from, and this was like not public news at all, and it, it was. It was a strange feeling. The atmosphere just died totally. It's like yeah. it didn't matter. And the away team also, I don't remember the away team, but everyone from the away team too was just kaput. There was no, no one wanted to do anything. Yeah. No one wanted to race. No one wanted to do anything. Yeah, I can, I can believe. I, I also remember that day uh, when we got the news. Uh, the first news was, was pretty sad. Like he... Yeah. He he fight for his life, so yeah. uh, that was uh, like you said. That was pretty shit uh, feeling and pretty shit day for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, what type of injuries have you had? <laughs> uh, I had uh, broken both legs and uh, one wrist uh, and. Uh, couple of concussions but I stopped to count after five yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or after fifth you you you're not able to count anymore yeah? no I know it's like oh racing okay I can race <laughs> that's why you got oh, so but... many mechanics so they make sure that you have the right helmet color because you don't think for yourself you know they just give you the right helmet <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I'm joking. I'm joking, yeah. of course. But uh, yeah, I think it, it's not bad. Like for for so many years, it's not bad. Uh, it looks like you had a great season and a great uh, a great career so far. And uh, now you will race for uh, Stal Goshov in the Pega Extra Liga. And yeah, where where else will you race or will you only uh, race in poland this season no no i i i um, i also sign a contract with uh, vetlanda speedway i know for for my uh, fifth year there or yeah yeah with busse Wiedebrand or busse Wiedebrand's club <laughs> more or less <laughs> yeah like uh, Boza and, and Mikkel Wierbrands are, are, are not in the club uh, anymore but, I know uh, because the club need to save some money now yeah Unfo- unfortunately yeah but they will come they... back just everything will open up so everything will be fine I think they are the faces of the speedway in Vetlanda you know so, yeah, like yeah. Uh, for now, it, it's hard to to, to imagine the uh, Vetlanda Speedway Club without without uh, them, yeah. <laughs> without Vera Brands, but that's how it is. And uh, maybe Mikael is, is watching us, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we can say hello to him from here. And Busse too. Yeah, um, of course. Busse is an old family friend of, of my family, so yeah. But it also will be the same. Grand Prix will never be the same without Gardel as the referee. Also, we, yeah. we he, he did his last season last year. So, OK, uh, we will check back on you later in the season. We will see how it goes with you, if that's OK with you. Yeah, of course. I just hope that uh, your program will bring me luck this year. Yes, of course. And uh, uh, we, we wish you all the best for this uh, season and uh, we will talk to you later and maybe you can uh, go in with uh, Anders Thompson because Anders Thompson was the first guest on this program 
you know. So yeah, we can we can uh, one day if we we'll, uh, spend the night in in Gozhov, we can we can join both. I'm sure that's gonna be a proper yeah. Crazy then situation. you can make it <laughs> super crazy, and I can give you a double window, and you can ruin everything. <laughs> but we just well, we just need to start after after ten in the night. <laughs> ah, it's no problem. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, Simon Wojciak. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. 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 And that was uh, Simon uh, Wojciak. Uh, next week, we will have a guy from Argentina. Last night, it was last night or Monday, he became uh, the champion of. Uh, um, Castrol Cup in Argentina and uh, winning all, all the rounds there, as I understand. And he's racing for um, Brevik in uh, in uh, UK. So, um, Coti Garcia will be our guest next week. And don't forget, log into YouTube and there you can uh, write questions directly to our guests. See you, bye.